Good morning. What a week it's been. I'm Janet Trevino and I live in San Antonio, Texas and I am a cuddleist with cuddleist.com. You can find us at cuddleist.com. Type it in, search your area, find a cuddleist near you and let's talk about touch. Consensual touch, boundaries, cuddling, love, all of it. So here's the big question. This one I'm a little scared of. Kind of scared. Because <laughs> it's a big one. Because it means something. Because it's important. Is this cheating? I mean, I see those pictures, you know, on the internet of people cuddling. And man, they're pretty close. Yeah. It looks really intense and intimate. And what if they're sharing all these secrets? And what if they're, like, exposing their soul and there's this bond? And it's what happens, right? Like, doesn't that lead to other things? Isn't Doesn't it lead to either sex or an emotional connection that's impenetrable? Penet is that a word? <laughs> I don't even know. So here's the question. Here's this big question I think a lot of people wonder, especially on the interwebs. And let's first make, let's clear an assumption. So for something to be cheating, it means that their partner doesn't know, right? So we're making, that's, that's really important to understand that there are plenty of people that come see cuddleists all the time that their partner doesn't know that they're seeing one. And I also will say that there are some cuddleists that don't feel comfortable with seeing um, clients that are, haven't told their partners. So it just depends on who you run into, which, which cuddleist is in your area. And you might just feel into which, yeah, that they will figure out together if that's gonna be a good fit. But for me personally here in Texas, I am okay with seeing people that have partners and they haven't told them. And hopefully at the end of this video, I'll share with you something amazing that's happened this week where a client did tell their partner and it was amazing. But we'll get to that at the end, so you have to wait till the end for that. So one other assumption I think is important is that the clients that come see me, they love their partners. I mean, they are committed in that relationship. They want that relationship. It's important to them. And they know that their partner loves them, right? So that's, that's also a given. They wouldn't be in that relationship if it didn't have meaning for them either. And it could be, you know, other reasons like um, there's children involved or security or finances. There's plenty of reasons why people stay in relationships. And I am not here to judge, and I also am not a therapist. So I'm not here to tell anyone, leave your partner. You know, you're not getting enough touch, you deserve more. I'm not here to, to make that judgment. So I do encourage my, my clients to see therapists, and I even give them my therapist, because I think he's pretty good, pretty amazing. So, you know, I, I encourage them to do that, to get that extra support that I can't provide and help make those decisions. And I also want to offer something else. It's that we provide an amazing service that allows people just to take a break from having to make that decision right now. Because again, the stakes are high. It is difficult. It's hard to know what to do when the relationship you've been in for two years, five years, 10, 20, 30. I've had people come who've been in a relationship for 40 years to see me. It's huge just to know, do you stay or do you go? So I will say, until your basic needs are met, don't make any big decisions like that. And I, you know, that's food, right? Shelter and touch. I would consider touch a basic need. So let me tell you a little bit of some truths about touch that I believe to be true. And I think a lot of us cuddleists, I think probably all of us would believe this to be true. And let's see where, did I lose my card? Oh no, here, here it is. I have all my cards and everything sorted here. Some truths. Touch is essential for health. So what I was saying before, it is a basic need. We all need touch. Well, I shouldn't say we all need. Um, we're all born with the need for touch, right? We're as children, we we have needs for touch, and as we get older, some of us our needs grow, and some of us our needs have lessened because of life experiences and things that have happened. But to expect that maybe you might be a high touch need person, that's very possible. Number two, some need more touch than others. So I guess it goes to that point that. Um, each of us needs to kind of feel into our, our bodies and ourselves and figure out what what feels good and what how much do we need. Number three, touch needs change over a lifetime. So again, you might be, um, don't need a lot of touch in your 20s and 30s, and then as you get older, 40s, 50s, 60s, and I see a lot of clients in their 50s and 60s and 70s, and things have radically changed. Where once it was more about sex, and now it's about 
and I just want someone to hold me. So that can happen. And it can also be flipped where maybe when you were young, you wanted a lot of cuddles and touch. And as you get older, you're just like, Ugh, no, I don't want that right now. And so that that's real. And the last one, number four, um, platonic needs or platonic touch is really difficult to find in our society. If you haven't um, established those relationships, neither with friends, family, it's it's awkward and definitely don't want to do it at work. I mean, you can, but I think that's like, you can get into sexual harassment and that can be dangerous. So it's hard when you spend a lot of time with people and you're not allowed to like, hey, uh, how you doing? <laughs> like even that's like, it's not enough. Like we're looking for, hey, just give me a big hug, right? So it's hard. It's really, really hard. All right. So people have asked me, why don't they just go to a therapist like this couple, these your client? Why doesn't you know? Why doesn't, or why doesn't he just talk to his partner? It should be simple enough, right? Just to go and and say, hey, you know, lover, friend, whatever partner, I um, I need touch. And there's a lot of different reasons, and again, I'm looking at different people, different clients again that have that have been in a relationship for a short amount of time, and those who've been in a relationship for 40 years, and. And so we're talking about a huge history for those who've been in for a long relationship that have, you know, the if you've been in a relationship, you know the dynamics is, are really difficult. So lots of people have confused sex and touch. And again, because touch needs change, if you've been in a relationship where every time you touched your partner, um, it was because you wanted cuddling and sex, and let's say your partner didn't want that. So yeah, you got rejected because it was like, I don't really want the whole package. I just touch would be nice but so if you've already established that kind of pattern then what happens you know when you've been in a relationship for 20 30 years every time you want to reach in to touch your partner because now you want touch just regular nurturing touch they're gonna say no so this again this this has been established a lot of people don't know how to ask for touch it is vulnerable it it does feel really needy and if you're the one the partner that's always been the strong one and everything you know you can handle everything and you don't need anything it's extremely difficult to ask your partner again to say could you hold me <sighs> that's legit that's real and and so going to someone brand new is, is can be easier to do that um, another reason might be that you're in a relationship where your partner doesn't like touch at all again because of touch needs have changed it's hard uh, I have I have you know partners who tell me that they come and they're it's been a five, 10 year marriage, and when they get into bed, the partner puts pillows in between them. I mean, they're that strict, they don't want anything, even in, in accidentally in the bed. And, you know, again, I'm not here to figure out why. I'd love to understand. I'd love to sit down and talk with that person and have them explain, but I mean, these are pretty private issues, and they don't tell me either. They just know that this is what they live with every day. So, I again, encourage them to go to a therapist. I encourage them to talk to their partner. It's not easy. Maybe they, I've had some that said they have, and it's not happening, and it's not going to happen. All right, so then I have the question that's like, well, what about all those positions? They look so sexual. You know, like I said before, like things happen, right? <laughs> and I would say, yes, maybe they would happen if um, you just went out there into the world and found yourself a side piece probably things would move escalate to something more because because you're both willing and, and able to now with a professional cuddleist though ding! <laughs> um no we're professionals this is why it's amazing and great that we exist because we hold to our cold code we hold to our boundaries we provide a service and those positions are exclusively for someone's well-being and for their, really, they've, they're asking for it and we feel into ourselves and feel if that's a yes for us, if that's a position that we're comfortable with with that person. Sometimes we're a no, sometimes we're a yes. And, and then, we, yeah, we, we do it. We, we, if you're a yes, we move into those more intimate positions that kind of like, you can imagine, the whole body, you know, it looks like, yeah, it looks, Again, people say more sexual. So, um, and and I have, I have found that in those positions, amazing deep breathing happens. There's a deeper relaxation. They they connect with themselves. I'm always inviting my clients to connect deeper with themselves. Not so much with me, but just go inside. 
and be and, and to relax more and I find that they're holding their bodies and I tell them relax into it like it's it's okay and and to trust me and and look and it's it's amazing so it's it, it doesn't really it's not sexual um, it goes into something else and I don't we don't even have words for it like there's no vocabulary to explain this you know what happens in that moment for me at least I haven't quite figured it out so okay professional right going back to to what we provide we are a safe container at least um, in the sense that you know that nothing is gonna happen beyond what we've established we are um, people come they meet with us for an hour or two and then they um, they leave and we don't communicate between sessions at least I don't do much communication unless it has to do with scheduling or ask, answering questions um, and so it's again it's it's great to be able to come to us and receive the touch that you need and then leave and let me think here um, why would that why might that be really good if you're a partner and you find out that your 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 partner is one of my clients or one of the cuddlest clients then you can know that that again is is isolated to that time and that there's nothing else that's happening between sessions there's a recommendation that we receive that we only see clients once a week to kind of make sure that those bonds are aren't established as strongly so we are trying to do our best to maintain the integrity of our work all right do, 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 do. next question so why is it a good idea that you come to see someone like me Again, cuddleist.com is a great place to find all the cuddleists that are in the country, and there's, I think, at least one in Canada. And we're expanding, of course, across the globe, hopefully, one day. So why might be a good idea? Because, <sighs> um, let's see, it helps you slow down. Right in this this rush of life, it's it helps for people to just to kind of decompress and de-stress, and I think that's essential for our well-being. Um, it also helps you work on yourself and, and self-help for yourself to be able to be that person that you're wanting to be um, so that you can stay in the relationship that is touchless, that has less touch than you would desire. And you don't need to get a side piece. So that's a drama. <laughs> There's a lot of drama in having to, you know, find someone and then relationship and um, yeah, that's, that's, if it's just touch you need, then I would say stay away from that and just come and and have a session with us. It's also great in that you know that we will hold that boundary and you know we were not gonna get attached to you. Again, we're professionals, we, can, we know how to handle these things and so you can come and connect and, and unwind and know that you're in a safe place with that. Um, and we also help you disconnect the touch from sex, which is essential, it's crucial to make that separation and to learn how to ask for what you want in just touch. Um, learning great communication skills makes life way better. If everyone was able to ask for what they wanted in terms of touch and re be rejected, understand what a no means, negotiate touch, I'd be out of a job. Or maybe we'd find something else to do. I'm sure that would be equally awesome. But just think about it. Like We all need to have these abilities. And I know that my clients, when they've come to me and they've practiced it, they go home, they go out into the world, and they feel more confident even... You know, asking people at church, you know, may may give you a hug, and I see how it's vibrating out and it's changing the world. It's really, really awesome. Um, and I think another really important thing when you're in a relationship and it's one that's touchless, I think that it allows you to be less desperate. And this is really, really important. Um, no one, I mean, not a lot of people like a desperate partner. One that is always asking and always needy and always wanting and, and once you lose that that edge that you just kind of like okay I got this I'm good I'm relaxed then allows you to be better present with for your partner at home allows you to be better present for your kids um, allows it not to be about you and then it's able you're able to take care of other people if you that's what you so desire so less desperate vibe energy allows for you to get really your needs met as well because then people aren't trying to push you away hey. all right and then I guess moving into this again more deeply like we've been dealing with really superficial stuff when it comes to cuddling and touch now let's look a little more deeply because it isn't just about touch I and mean, this isn't it's also about communication but there's even goes more than that this is a 
health care service. Yep, you heard me right. It is health care. Now, how, why? What do, you, what, do you, what do I mean by that? There's so much research that's been done, and science has proven that touch and oxytocin can increase your longevity, your life, and how and the quality of your life. So when you touch and you hold someone or you receive any of that kind of affection, stress is reduced. I mean, just stress reduction can change someone's life, it builds immunity, heart health, cardiovascular health, respiratory health, emotional support, right? Mental health, all of these systems and structures that when under stress, they start to malfunction. Can you imagine if removing that stress, how things can run more smoothly in the body and provide you a better and longer life? Worth it, yes, just totally worth it. So, and then the recognize, the, we need to recognize that we can't be everything for our partners and that's okay. So, again, not only do we, do we provide touch and communication skills, but we improve your life overall. And that, I mean, can't beat it. So going back to the original question, do, 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 do. is it cheating? I'd love to see some of you say yes or no below in the comments. Comment below. Is it cheating? I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that no client of mine that's come to see me has desired to hurt their partner back at home. They don't want to hurt them. They want to be a better self. Every single one has wanted to work on themselves and they want a better relationship. And in the meanwhile, while they're trying to figure all those things out, they've come to me to figure, to try to work it through and figure it out. So just like lots of people go to talk therapy and a lot of people go to physical massage and other different services out there in the world, this is now available for you, for you. So please go to cuddleist.com and find someone in your area. Come see me if you're in San Antonio. I'm Janet Trevino and I hope you all get the touch and cuddles that you need this weekend. Take care.